1988. Uh, Brett is a fully fledged single wrestler. And um, the reason being, he's uh, turned into a good guy is because apparently he's getting more fan mail than anybody else, including Hulk Hogan. Uh, but my question to you is, how much fan mail did you get? Like, I don't know if you what metric you want to use, like sacks full uh, every month. Did you reply to anybody and did you get some really weird things sent to you over the years? No, I, 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 I didn't get any fan mail. We were in the room. They might have went to the office or something. I don't know if they ever distributed or anything. They ever said anything important enough. I don't remember getting any. I don't remember getting any fan mail. Maybe you know the occasional something at at, at, a, at an arena or something. You know, some I had some friends, um, some people I met that I did a did an appearance for it at a skate rink, and he he was in Barb Artis, and they made us a nice doll and a nice letter. We became you know friends after a while, and, and to to this day. But they you know they, they were you know it was an intelligent you know exchange. It wasn't a you know it wasn't a fan letter. Mm. And uh, they lived in Philadelphia. I was up in Edison, New Jersey. So you know, it was. You know, I still keep in contact with them. Yeah. So no, like I, we never got. Uh, I never, you know, like my, I had no ad, no address. There were no cards. There, you know, rarely any pictures. There were no autograph. You know, like they have now. There, there were no Comic Con shows or autograph shows. Or meet, meet and greet with the wrestlers any, anywhere. So no, like so poison was, cakes or like naked photos of women or anything. Trying to entice you? No, <laughs> no, no. Well, we no no cell phones, you know. In the last couple of days, last well, last week I got two or three days in a row. You know, women or you know the online solicitation. I go, well, what did I do to deserve this? You know. <laughs> yeah, I will give you the next one then. Uh, solo, solo. Bret Hart goes against Bad News Brown for his first uh, feud as a good guy. Bad News Brown, you've got to have some memories of this, dude. I remember like uh, Lance Storm, I think, may have said, when Bad News Brown walked into the locker room, everybody just sort of s sat up a little bit straighter. I worked with him one time in Hawaii. I was going through or coming through. For, maybe I was, I was, I don't know what I was doing there. I was going, I was, I was just, it was when Liam, I think it was Liam, I guess, promotion and they booked me with him. And um, it was a horrible match, just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And I was a baby face, but he didn't seem to want, you know, I would just went and got a double DQ finish or something like that. And it wasn't, you know, not, wasn't a really entertaining match. He had, he had come from Calgary. He had spent a lot of time in Calgary with Brett. So, um, Evidently, you know, they, I guess they were, you know, must spend some time down the dungeon. And uh, I'm sure, you know, being a judo, uh, what was he, silver medalist? I think he was a bronze medalist. Bronze medalist, well, yeah. you know, he was up there in the, to get into the Olympics alone. But he, he placed to, to be a medalist, and uh, I'm sure the old man wanted to, you know, eh, eh, can you, eh, you know, they come down and, <laughs> and have a talk with the boys, yeah. He was great. The old man was great. Really great. Everybody, that voice, everybody copies that. You know, it's, uh, he talked to me as in Hawaii one time and he was asking about Curtis and stuff. And, and, and he does, because he just loved to, love to, I was on the phone in Hawaii. And, uh, and Curtis said, I, I mentioned that Curtis started, yeah, yeah. I was the, I was the bull. I was the big bull doing that. The big guy. He's, uh, He's a he's a he's a good time was up here with uh, Mark Lewin. and and he you go out he talk he talked you know an hour on the phone. He, this <laughs> guy was uh, he was a cool old guy, man. He was, like, did he, so he, did he have cool. like no animosity despite the fact he tried to steal the territory off him that one time? Evidently not, yeah. And you know you, you want to pretty much you know you want to come to Calgary and take uh, help yourself, you know. <laughs> you, you, you can stand living in this frozen outback, you know, a year in and year out, and you know that's a that that that's a that's a place out there. You know that that's for you know Hawaii is the extreme, and that's the other. You know, I, I guess you could live in the North Pole or something. 
if you really wanted to go go far out. But whoo, <laughs> beautiful at Banff up in there and Banff and stuff outside of Calgary. What a you know some of those British Columbia, some of the scenery there is just spectacular. Uh, before we get off bad news, there's a couple of very, very well-known uh, confrontations, so we shall we say, involving bad news. One's with um, the Cuban assassin, who uh, was, I think he was going to have a, a tryout in the WWF, and also one was with Andre the Giant on a bus. Do you remember hearing or even seeing either of those happen? Just hearing little stories. Uh, Cuban assassin, didn't that turn into some kind of a stabbing or something? I, th- I think... I don't know what happened. I think he either chased him out of the arena with something, but I think their wives had a falling out, and then they were best friends, and then were mortal enemies like overnight. Oh yeah, I I heard some. I heard that he had uh, some heat there, but don't know. And, and Andre, Andre just didn't like some guys, you know, and some you know guys wouldn't. Uh, you know, I guess they did have a, a thing about Andre too. They just. You know, they didn't want to put him over, you know. You know, you know what are you going to do? He's a giant. He's a giant. You know, you can't, uh, you know, you're not you're not going to be a giant. And, you know, if you, you get some kind of thing, you know. I don't know what happened with him and Andre. Mm. No, I, I wouldn't, you know, Japan, you're in close quarters. And, um, you know, you're, you're, you can get short-tempered at times, you know, or just frustrated with the whole situation no english no food no this a lot of food hmm. but you have to like cold it, eggs you know. uh, yeah well that was that one <laughs> just one instance <laughs>